Danny was a scholar, you know. He was studying for his PhD in physics. He had a big future, Mr. Stone. I know how painful this must be. He had dinner with us every Sunday night, the night that he was killed. They know all this, honey. We usually walked him to the bus stop that night. I was too tired, and you, you had to watch your game. Mr. and Mrs. Nasiri, I'm so sorry about Danny. Get him away from us. Damn, dude, I just want to tell you I didn't kill him. Byron, come on, let's go. Danny didn't do anything to that boy. Except look different. I assure you, most Americans will not tolerate the murder of an innocent boy. We should go. Monday morning around 1.45 a.m., we found the body in an abandoned building on South Kimbark. He was already deceased when we arrived. You didn't just happen by the building, I assume. It is in Council's place to assume facts, not in evidence. Rephrase. Did you merely happen by the building on South Council Kim... is leading the witness. And Council forgets this is a preliminary hearing, not a trial. Rephrase. What brought you to that abandoned building on South Kimbark, Sergeant? An anonymous call from what we later learned was a tweaker who was squatting in the building. What condition was Danny Nasiri in when you found him? He was dead. He'd been beaten to death with a tire iron that we found in an adjacent dumpster. Is this how you found Danny Nasiri? It is. And this? Yep. What initially led you to suspect the defendant, Byron Welch? We learned from campus police there had been a prior altercation between him and Danny Nasiri. And why did you eventually arrest Byron Welch? We found a sweatshirt that was stained with what turned out to be Danny Nasiri's blood. It had been shoved into the back of Byron's closet under his dirty underwear. <laughs> you think this is some kind of joke? Come on. Stop. How dare you? Oh, you're oh, no, you're <laughs> 